In this video, you will learn about similar figures. First, similar polygons are polygons that have the same shape, but not necessarily the same size. As we can see here, the quadrilateral on the left is much larger than the quadrilateral on the right. However, their angles are the same size. And we use this squiggly symbol to show that they are similar. So for example, we have ABCD is similar to EFGH. In order for polygons to be similar, they have to have corresponding sides congruent and corresponding sides proportional. So in congruent triangle, congruent figures, they had to be corresponding sides congruent. Now they have to be proportional, meaning that they need to have the same ratio. So in the diagram, we can say that we have the corresponding angles congruent because angle A is congruent to angle E. Angle B is congruent to angle F. Angle C is congruent to angle G. And angle D is congruent to angle H. And then similarly, we have to match up the corresponding sides that are proportional in the same ratio. So AB over EF, so we can match up my sides, BC to FG, so BC over FG, CD over GH, and AD to EH, all should have the same ratio in order for them to be similar. And that ratio is what we call the similarity ratio. And what we can do to show the comparison of the size is we use what is called the scale factor. And it depends on the order that they are written. Essentially, if I say figure one is, or triangle one is similar to triangle two, you should be setting it up so it's a side of triangle one over a side of triangle two. And we simplify the ratio. So for example, here, if we put ABC first, the side length in ABC is 6, so 6 goes on the top. And the second one, ABC is second, so 6 goes on the bottom. And then if it's similar to triangle XYZ, if XYZ is second, the side length in XYZ is 3, so I put the 3 on the bottom, versus if it's first, XYZ, the 3 goes on the top for XYZ. And then to find our answer, we have to simplify and notice that the answers are similar, but they're different because they're the reciprocal depending upon the order. Just like we had for core congruent figures, we can identify corresponding parts of similar figures. So angle E, what we notice is that E is the first spot in the similarity statement, and A is the first spot in the similarity statement. And we know that in similar figures, the angles are congruent. So the measure of angle A is 53, and the corresponding angle is E. So we can assume that this angle is also 53 degrees. The other thing we know is that the sides are proportional. So I can match up and say, okay, if I have AB as the first two points in the similarity statement, EF as the second two. We can match up AB over EF. The next one I'm looking at is AD, which is the first and the last one. So the first and the last one similarity of statement is EH. So AD corresponds to EH. So we can fill in EH in the bottom of my proportion. If we try this example, and again using our similarity statement, because we know that the angles are congruent. I can match up what's given. So since angle B is the second vertex in the statement, angle Y is the second vertex in the statement in the other triangle, so I can say angle B and angle Y should be the same. So angle B is 78 degrees. Now I can match up and say, okay, BC is the last two points in the statement, 
And the last two points in the second statement is YZ. So BC matches to YZ. And I also have XZ on the bottom and XZ are the first and the last points. So the first and last points in the similarity statement are AC. So AC corresponds to XZ. So I can fill in my statement to have AC on the top. And the next slides we'll practice determining if figures are similar. So in order to determine if figures are similar, we have to check two things. Are the angles congruent? And are the sides proportional? And both of these have to be true in order for the figures to be similar. So if I look for the first part at the angles, I can say, okay, I have one marking to one marking. I have two markings to two markings, three markings to three markings. Since I have the three pairs of similar or congruent angles, I can say that yes, the angles are congruent. Now to match up the sides, I needed to consider the ratio. What I can do is you wanna make sure you're matching up the corresponding side lengths. So typically I'll say, okay, the smallest side of the first triangle is 12 and the smallest side of the second triangle is 16. So I'm gonna say, okay, the small sides is 12 over 16. And then I'll do the same thing for the medium. So the medium side length is 15. The medium side length in the second one is 20. So I have 15 over 20. And then for the large, my largest side is 18 and the largest side here is 24. So for the large, I have 18 over 24. What we have to check is that these all simplify to the same fraction. So if I simplify 12 over 16, I get 3 over 4. 15 over 20 simplifies to 3 over 4. And 18 over 24 simplifies to 3 over 4. So since all of these are the exact same, we can say that yes, the sides are proportional. So now we have to write our similarity statement and give the similarity ratio. So to do this, I can say, okay, I'm going to match up the vertices. So if I call it triangle ABC, notice that A has one marking and the one that one, one marking the other triangle is F. So I'll say it's similar to triangle F. Then I'm going to use B, which has two markings. And the one with two markings, the other triangle is E, and then my last vertex is D. So I have triangle ABC is similar to triangle FED. And now if I want to write my similarity ratio, I have to compare the side length. So I need a side in triangle ABC over a side in triangle FED. So let's say I choose to use the small sides, for example, it would be 12 over 16, which becomes three over four. So your similarity ratio is three over four or three, two, four, and that would be our final answer. Okay, now let's practice just figuring out if the polygons are similar. So we know that the two things I need are that the angles are congruent and the sides are proportional. So if I look, my angles are all right angles in both figures. So since they're all right angles, they are all congruent, I can say, yes, the angles are congruent. Now I need to match with the sides. The nice thing here is there's only two different side lengths. The smaller sides are eight and the small sides 
in the other rectangle are 12. So for the small, I have 8 divided by 12. And then the larger sides are 12. And the larger sides of the other figure are 18. So I can say, okay, I'm going to have 12 divided by 18. Now when I simplify both of these, 8 over 12 becomes 2 over 3, and 12 over 18 becomes 2 over 3. So since these are the same, I can say, yes, the sides are proportional, so the figures are similar. For the next example, we're going to do the same thing. So I first have to determine, are the angles congruent? And are the sides proportional? So if I look at this example, I have an angle, two angles with one marking to two angles with one marking. Then I have two angles with two markings and two angles with two markings. Since these are the same, I can say that yes, they're congruent. Now let's match up the side lengths. So my smallest side in both these figures is 4.2 over the small side in the other figure, which is 26.6. .6. So if I simplify 4.2 divided by 26.6 .6 in the calculator, it gives me 0 0.158, which I'm going to leave as a fraction, so it becomes 3 over 19. For the next one, I need the medium side. So the medium side of the first figure is 5, and the medium side of the second one is 29. So if I simplify the medium, I have 5 over 29. And when I put that in the calculator, it gives me 0 0.172. And if I leave it as a fraction, it's just going to stay as 5 over 29. And then lastly, for the large side, well, the first one is 8, and the second one is 48. So for the large side, I have 8 over 48. You plug that in the calculator, you get... 0 0.16 repeating, which when I leave that as a fraction, becomes 1 over 6. Now what we should notice is that these ratios are not the same. So are the sides proportional? No. And since this is not proportional, we can say the figures are not similar because we have to satisfy both conditions. For the next example, I first need to determine, are the angles congruent? Now what we can use is that we have the same side interior angles, which we know are supplementary. So for example, I say, okay, it should be 110 plus x equals 180 to find this angle right here. So I get that x is 70. Now if I keep applying this around my figure, I say, okay, now I'm going to have for this angle, 70 plus y equals 110, or 180. So I get y equals 110. Now if I keep applying this in both figures, I get this angle is 110, this one is 70. And the other tri or the other parallelogram of this angle is 70, this is 110, and this is 70. You also can apply properties of quadrilaterals, which we haven't done, but you should be familiar with to determine this. Now, based on this, I can say, okay, I have two angles that are 110 in both of these. I have two angles that are 70 in both of these. So I can say that, yes, the angles are congruent. Now I need to figure out if the sides are proportional. I'm going to go through and match up my sides like I did 
in the previous one. So the small side, there's two that are the same in the first one. So the small side is 25, and the small side in the other quadrilateral is 20. So I can say, okay, 25 over 20, which simplifies if I just go straight to the fraction to 5 over 4. And the large side in the first quadrilateral is 50, and the large side in the second quadrilateral is 28. I say, okay, if 50 over 28, and if you simplify that in the calculator, this becomes 25 over 14. Now, what we should see is that these two are not the same. So the sides are not proportional. So the figures are not similar. Now let's practice determining the scale factor. So it says, if polygons in each pair are similar, find the scale factor from the smaller to the larger figure. Like we said before, you could use a similar statement, but in this case, they're just telling you the order to apply it in. So what I have to do is I have to match up my corresponding sides. So I can say, okay, the 12 in this side matches to the six in this figure. However, I have to match them up so it's small to large. So if I do that, the smaller one is 6 over the larger side is 12. Now when I simplify this, it becomes 1 half, so I can write my answer as 1 over 2 or 1 to 2. In the next example, I have to do the same thing where I'm comparing the smaller figure to the larger figure. This one, however, gives me two options. So if I know that I can match up my sides and we're doing small to large, if I choose to use these corresponding sides, I have my small side is six and my large side is nine. I say, okay, I have six over nine, which becomes two over three. If I choose to use these as my corresponding sides, I have my smaller one is 14, my larger figure is 21. So I have 14 over 21, which becomes two over three. What we can see is these two are the same, so it doesn't matter which one we use, but our scale factor is 2 over 3 or 2 to 3. Now let's try a couple examples where you have to determine if they're similar, the scale factors, and the similarity statements all in one part. So first, I have to determine if the figures are similar. So I need to check, are the angles congruent? And are the sides proportional. So if I look for the angles, I have one marking to one marking, two markings to two markings, three markings to three markings. We can see that these all match, so yes, the angles are congruent. Now I want to match up the side lengths. So the small side in the first figure is 10, small side in the second one is 5. So for the small side, I have 10 over 5, which becomes 2. Then I have the medium of 12 to the medium of 6. So for the medium, I have 12 over 6, which becomes 2. And then lastly, I have my large side of 14 to the large side of 7. So it's 14 over 7, which becomes 2. So since all of these are 2, we can say that yes, the sides are proportional. So now I can write my similarity statement. So I can say that, yes, the figures are similar. I can write my similarity statement. So if I call it triangle ABC, it's similar to, I have to match up the vertices. So A 
has one marking, and x has one marking on the angle. So a matches to x, then b has two markings, and then all the two markings in the other triangle is y, y. And then my last vertex in this triangle is z. And that corresponds to C. And then the last thing is I have to write my similarity statement. So because the order I have it written, or your scale factor, is going to be triangle ABC over triangle XYZ. So for this one, let's say I choose to use the small sides. I have 10 to 5. It's going to be 10 over 5, which we know is 2. So I can say that my scale factor is 2 or Rondorator's ratio will be 2 to 1. In the next example, I have to apply the same thing. So first, I need to determine are the angles congruent, and then I need to know are the sides proportional. Now, what we should see here is we don't know anything about any of these angles. There is no information given to us. So we can't say are the angles congruent. We have to say no because we don't know enough information. So my answer is not similar, because even if the sides are proportional, I don't know anything about the angles, so the figures aren't similar. In this problem, I again, you know, okay, are the angles congruent? And then are the sides proportional? What we can see if I look at the angles, I don't have any angles that are congruent. I have in the first one, I have right angles. And the next one, I have 120 and 60 from angles. None of these are the same. So are the angles congruent? No. So are the polygons similar? No, we'd have to say they're not similar. Again, it doesn't matter if the sides are similar. All that matters is that the angles are not congruent. In this next example, again, we have to start by determining are the angles congruent. So if I match up my angles, I have one congruency to one congruency, two to two, three to three. So we can say that, yes, the angles are congruent. Then I need to check are the sides proportional. So I can match up, so I have the small side to the small side. So it'll be 14 over 20, which simplifies to 7 over 10. Then I have the medium side to the medium side. So it would be 21 over 30, which becomes 7 over 10. Then I have the large side to the large side. So my large side to be 28 over 40 becomes 7 over 10. Since all these are the same, I can say that yes, they're similar. So the figure is similar. I can write a congruence statement. So ABC is similar to triangle A in the first triangle is the one with the one marking, so only one marking in the second triangle is X. B in the first triangle is two markings, so the two markings in the other triangle is Y. And then the remaining vertex is C, the remaining vertex in the other triangle is Z. Now for my scale factor, it has to be triangle ABC over triangle XYZ.
z. So in this case, if I choose to use the small sides, it will be the small side of the ABC, which is 20, over the small side of the other triangle, which is 14. So it becomes 10 over 7. So the scale factor is 10 over 7, or 10 to 7. In this example, I again have to start by checking that the angles are congruent. So I can say, okay, all of both of these quadrilaterals have all right angles. So all the angles are the same. So yes, they are congruent. Then I need to check, are the sides proportional? So if I check that, the small side of the first quadrilateral is 4, and the small side of the second quadrilateral is 4 as well. So I have 4 over 4, which becomes 1. The large side of the first one is 9, and the large side of the second one is 6. So the large would be 9 over 6, which becomes 3 over 2. Now since these are not the same, the sides are not proportional, so we can say that the figures are not similar. Now we can also apply similar figures to solve problems. So for example, I can match up my sides to write a proportion. So I have the side length of 12 goes with 30 because BC matches to XZ. So I can set up my proportion to be 12 over 30. Then I need AC of the figure, which is X. That's AC, so it equals X over and the first and the last bit spot in the other triangle would be yz. So yz in the other figure is 40. The most important thing is that we are careful in how we set these up. So the way I set this one up was I said that I put triangle ABC on the top over triangle XYZ. Now, if I cross multiply and solve, I'm going to get 30x equals 480. And then if I solve, I get x equals 16. This isn't the only way to set the proportion, but it's one of many that will get us the same ratios. As long as you set them up consistently, you'll still get the correct answer. Now we can do the same thing in this example. So if I match up my sides, I have the side four is between one marking and no marking. So the one that's between one marking and no marking is five. So I can say, okay, I have four over five. Then I have the side length of x plus 5, which is between 2 and 1. So in between 2 and 1, the other figure is 15. So I can put over here equals x plus 5 over 15. And this is based on the fact that we are doing a, g, c, d over w, y, q, t. Now I can solve by cross multiplying. So you get 5 times x plus 5 equals 60. So 5x plus 25 equals 60. So you have 5x is 35. So x is equal to 7.
In this example, we have to match up the corresponding sides. So I can say that the 2 corresponds with the 3. And the x plus 3 corresponds with the 2x plus 2, based on the angle measures. So now if I write my equation, I can say 2 over 3 equals x plus 3 over 2x plus 2. Now if I cross multiply, I have 2 times 2x plus 2 equals 3 times x plus 3. So to solve, I distribute. So I get 4x plus 4 equals, and I distribute again, 3x plus 9. I can subtract 3x from both sides. So I get x plus 4 equals 9, and subtract 4 from both sides. So I get x is equal to 5 as my final answer. In our final example, I again have to match up our corresponding sides. So I can say that the side between the two right angles corresponds to the other side between the two right angles. And the side with one right angle corresponds to the other side with one right angle. So if I write my equation, I have 12 over 8x minus 1 equals 4 over 3x minus 1. So to solve, I cross multiply. So I have 12 times 3x minus 1 is equal to 4 times 8x minus 1. Now I would distribute. So I'd have 36x minus 12 equals 32x minus 4. Bring all the x's to one side so I can subtract 32x from both sides. So I get 4x minus 4 equals negative 4. Or 4x minus 12 equals negative 4. Add 12 to both sides. So I get 4x equals 8. And divide both sides by 4 to get that x is equal to 2. That was my final answer.